Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles. This is the third edition by the Foundation for Inner Peace. We are in Chapter 21, Section 7, The Last Unanswered Question, picking up on Paragraph 6. I'm going to reread the questions in Paragraph 5. Do I desire a world I rule instead of one that rules me? Do I desire a world where I am powerful instead of helpless? Do I desire a world in which I have no enemies and cannot sin? And do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? You may already have answered the first three questions, but not yet the last. For this one still seems fearful and unlike the others. Yet reason would assure you they are all the same. We said this year would emphasize the sameness of things that are the same. This final question, which is indeed the last you need decide, still seems to hold a threat the rest have lost for you. And this imagined difference attests to your belief that truth may be the enemy you yet may find. Here, then, would seem to be the last remaining hope of finding sin and not accepting power. Forget not that the choice of sin or truth, helplessness or power, is the choice of whether to attack or heal. For healing comes of power and attack of helplessness. Whom you attack, you cannot want to heal, and whom you would have healed, must be the one you choose to be protected from attack. And what is this decision but the choice whether to see him through the body's eyes or let him be revealed to you through vision? How this decision leads to its effects is not your problem, but what you want to see must be your choice. This is a course in cause and not effect. Consider carefully your answer to the last question you have left unanswered still, and let your reason tell you that it must be answered and is answered in the other three, and then it will be clear to you that as you look on the effects of sin in any form, all you need do is simply ask yourself, Is this what I would see? Do I want this? This is your one decision, this the condition for what occurs. It is irrelevant to how it happens, but not to why. You have control of this, and if you choose to see a world without an enemy in which you are not helpless, the means to see it will be given you. Why is the final question so important? Reason will tell you why. It is the same as are the other three, except in time. The others are decisions that can be made and then unmade and made again. But truth is constant and implies a state where vacillations are impossible. You can desire a world you rule that rules you not and change your mind. You can desire to exchange your helplessness for power and lose this same desire as a little glint of sin attracts you, and you can want to see a sinless world and let an enemy tempt you to use the body's eyes and change what you desire. In content, all the questions are the same, for each one asks if you are willing to exchange the world of sin for what the Holy Spirit sees, since it is this the world of sin denies. And therefore, those who look on sin are seeing the denial of the real world. Yet, the last question adds the wish for constancy in your desire to see the real world, so the desire becomes the only one you have. By answering the final question, yes, you add sincerity to the decisions you have already made to all the rest. For only then have you renounced the option to change your mind again. When it is this you do not want, the rest are wholly answered. Why do you think you are unsure the others have been answered? Could it be necessary they be asked so often if they had? 
Until the last decision has been made, the answer is both yes and no, for you have answered yes without perceiving that yes must mean not no. No one decides against his happiness, but he may do so if he does not see he does it. And if he sees his happiness as ever-changing, now this, now that, and now an elusive shadow attached to nothing, he does decide against it. Elusive happiness, or happiness in changing form that shifts with time and place, is an illusion that has no meaning. Happiness must be constant because it is attained by giving up the wish for the inconstant. Joy cannot be perceived except through constant vision. And constant vision can be given only to those who wish for their constancy. The power of the Son of God's desire remains the proof that he is wrong who sees himself as helpless. Desire what you want and you will look on it and think it real. No thought but has the power to release or kill and none can leave the thinker's mind or leave him unaffected. I love you. Thank you so much for joining with me. I will see you tomorrow and we will read, begin section seven of chapter 21. I can't speak. The inner shift. Thank you.